We have a Heyman Swerve video package and then a Samoa Joe promo. Where, in fact, he says he is the one who brought back the rankings. Yeah, yeah. what a heel. Thank him. Everything was going well until Hangman and Swerve went to that draw. They both should have gone to the back of the line, but instead, AEW has done. They've gone the Texas route. They've made the match bigger and dumber. A crime has been committed against me. There must be repercussions. They may both walk in, but they will both limp out. Place goes nuts for this guy. Mm -hmm. Total babyface pop. Swerve interrupts. Says Joe has made this personal. He's been working 15 years to prove he's one of the best in the world, and today is that day. And the crowd is hanging on every word Swerve says. Like they're they're dead silent while he's talking, but it's not the disinterested silence. It's the what's he gonna say? I must listen. And a couple of guys are shouting jokes and Swerve popped at one point or cracked at one point, but whatever. And then Hangman comes out. Hangman TA at this point. And people are just pissed at him. He hate this guy. Yeah. We actually have a scenario where we had top heel Samoa Joe, top heel Swerve, and top babyface Hangman. And now suddenly, Joe is beloved, Swerve is beloved, and people hate Hangman. He was the only guy here that was hated. Yes. They hate this guy. So he insists he was not mad last week, but it was horseshit. The contract said the winner would be the top contender. Swerve couldn't do it. You don't deserve... deserve oh, uh, yeah, he told Swerve, you don't deserve any more of my time. You could not get the job done. So, yes, Hangman, in storyline, is still upset that Swerve is getting a title shot, even though he is getting one as well. He's angry about this more than uh, excited about his opportunity. So, at this point, there he needs to this face. Joe is sick of being ignored. He vows to beat both their asses. And his music plays... And he leaves, and the crowd is chanting Joe's name. And I don't know if it's all, it didn't really happen all at once, obviously, but this felt like the first triple turn in pro wrestling. It basically was. Yeah. So then they're, they're like jaw jacking, and that's when Joe jumps in and says, I'm going to revolution, and I'm going to beat both your asses. And everybody goes nuts for Samoa Joe. They want Joe to beat both their asses, even Swerve. So we'll see what happens. I think Joe's walking out as champ. I, I do too. And I would have him walk out as champ because I don't know if he was ever supposed to be champ, but he is, and he's fucking awesome. And so I don't want this to be a short-term thing. There's plenty of time for Swerve to finish his story. That's true. Don't need to be right now. And uh, him and Hangman can continue their feud and do whatever they're going to do. But I love Samoa Joe as champion. He's fucking great. Out there in that suit. Samoa Joseph wearing his suit. <laughs> Timeless Tony Storm reveals her new film, Wet Ink. She's looking at the tattoo on her ankle. It reminds her of a girl she felt sorry for, who was so desperate Tony pitied her. She brought Diana into Japan, helped her sign her contract. She explains, and I'm not making this, these words up. That's what she said. You, I nurtured you... On my bosom of brilliance, and you suckled on my teat of talent, but now you've bit the tit that feeds you. Yeah. Yeah. You she likes them titties. Apparently. It's a breast intensive promo here. You've got who you were, you're just an extra. You will get the old Tony Storm. And what do you do when you can't change the past? You kill it. And she reveals. And she's apparently gotten a real tattoo of a knife going through the tattoo that she and Deanna shared. Is that really a real tattoo? I don't know. I'm no expert. Yeah, we'll see. They showed a close-up. That's, that's what's on her ankle for now. <laughs> Dragger here says, if you were to rank Tony Storm promos, this was one of the breast by far. <laughs> He's very impressed by that one. I was. All right. So Deanna declared Tony, I believe she used the term yakety yam. She talks too much. She says, Tony, I'm going to break your arm, bitch. Wow. The EVPs have arrived. Yes. Matthew, Matthew Nicholas Jackson. And they go right to the ring for Matthew and Nicholas Jackson versus Top Flight. EVPs are still rusting the suits. Yeah. So they sell forever. They get the heat. We go right to commercial. We come back just in time for Dante to get the hot tag. And Dante is doing awesome Dante Martin things. And the EVPs know how to feed, and it's all brilliant. 
And then it goes on and on and on. Thinking, okay, the Jacksons are not losing this match to top flight. They're going to win. They're going to main event probably, the Revolution pay-per-view. They don't need to sell this much for top flight. And they sell, and they sell, and they sell. Keep in mind that all we have seen in this match is the Jacksons sell. And they sell, and they sell, and eventually they're desperate. They had a foul. They get the EVP trigger and win. Like, as a match, this was fine. But it's okay for main eventers to just beat guys. You don't have to panic and make sure they look good in the process. Just kick ass and win. There are a lot of people in this promotion that want to put people over. And somebody needs to put their foot down. I'm talking about you, Brian Danielson, and the Young Bucks here, and many, many others. Yeah, sometimes you just need to beat people. But you know what? I didn't mind because I thought this match was quite great. And I was astonished watching it. I guess I wasn't astonished because I I talked about it when we watched the top flight match with... uh, uh, private party. You put those two teams together, and it's just like an indie match. Yeah. But for some reason, you put either of those teams with the Young Bucks, Us. and it's fucking amazing. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Well, that is why. Yeah. And it wasn't even like... See, the thing with Matthew and Nicholas is they're not the Young Bucks that are going to go out there and do like 85,000 high spots and everything like that. It is old school pro wrestling heat is what they're getting. And they barely do anything... They're just like an old school heel tag team. Bump and feed the entire match. And god damn, they made Private Party or Top Flight look amazing here. And they would do the same with Private Party as well. So anyway, they're an incredible tag team. And then we had the interview afterwards. We did. Which apparently everyone's talking about. Are they? Yeah, they sure are. Well, a lot happened here. So Matthew is celebrating being unbeaten, beating a great team like Top Flight. It is safe to assume we are number one contenders now, and they have the graphic to prove this. So Tony Schiavone says, Sting is not here, and he begins to say it's because of them, but Matthew cuts him off. Tony, you trash talk us all the time. That is a breach of contract, publicly disparaging the EVPs, a $1,000 fine. Do you have a problem with that? And uh, Nicholas is so fired up, he gets in Tony's face and knocks him to his ass. And the Jacksons apologize. They go to help him up. But, of course, it's a ruse. They're going to EVP trigger his head off. But Darby Allen's music makes the save. So the Jacksons flee. And now Darby's talking. He talks about the original mission of AEW was to change the world. He was homeless. He was begging the Young Bucks for a job. But had to sit back and watch their shit friends get fired. All their buddies from California is what he said. Thank God there was an EVP here with a sense of brains, and I'm not talking about Kenny Omega. At which point, the crowd boisterously, passionately chants for the biggest babyface in the other promotion. Darby says, it is like all friendship wrestling here. That first episode of Dynamite, I wasn't on it, but Brandon Cutler was. If you want Sting's final match, a man has got nothing left left to lose. You want the Bucks versus Darby and Sting for the AEW tag titles? Well, it's showtime. Yes, it was a very good promo, and it I guess it made official the match that I thought was official for like a month now. No, it wasn't official till yesterday. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would have left out the line that uh, inspired them to cheer for the other company's top baby face. That's just me. You know, I uh, forget what Dave said about this last night, but he really did a number on this uh, interview. What did he... Pitiful, he said. Pitiful. Wow. <laughs> Called it pitiful. And... Uh, I actually wish old Lenny was on the chat right now. He's he's not there tonight for some reason. But uh, I love Lenny. But Lenny's one of those guys where no matter what WWE does, it's terrible. It's just horrible. Hmm. And it doesn't matter what AEW does. He'll find a way to say it's all right. Gotcha. And I actually think he did earlier today. It might have been during Observer Live or maybe it was in wherever it was. But this is one of those things where... I used to review WWE, and some really stupid shit would happen. Maybe that Hell in a Cell match with, uh, remember Bray and Seth? I do. I'd go nuts about how fucking dumb it is. Oh, there's Leonard right there. Hello, Leonard. But anyway, there'd be some really stupid shit in WWE, and I'd talk about what stupid shit it was. 
And then you'd have the fans that are like diehard WWE fans. They would come to the defense and they'd explain this or that or whatever. I think maybe thinking that, you know, the company would want to be stuck up for, like the wrestlers would agree. I don't even know what, but. And then like you later hear interviews with the participants and they talk about what absolute utter shit it is. Okay. <laughs> and this is this one here. Like I've seen people say that they thought that this was good or whatever and explaining why they think it's good. And I'll tell you something. I talked to a lot of people in AEW about this today. And man, I didn't hear one person say that this was good. Mm. Okay? Mm. Now, there was a range, okay? Sure. There were certain people that said, like, you know, I, I don't think it was as bad as, as Dave said, but yeah, you know, swing and a miss, the follow-up to last week's beating, I mean, you know, definitely could have been done better. And then I had other people there that were like, I have no idea how this got to the ring. Like, I'd have fought somebody <laughs> if I knew this was going to go through the curtain. Like, furious at this at this segment right here. And I will say this about the segment, because I do want to, uh, I don't know if it's really a defense, okay? But I guess it is, because Dave said that uh, this was a Russo promo, because, you know, they were talking about, you know, you hired all your friends, and there was an EVP and everything like that. But what's funny is, actually, this wasn't a Russo promo, okay? This is not a Russo promo. Because what Darby said... Mm -hmm was that you guys didn't want me here, but luckily there was an EVP with a brain that wasn't Kenny Omega who brought me in. And in real life, that isn't what happened. That is what happened in storyline. What Darby brought up was actually what happened in storyline. In real life, the person who recruited Darby was the Young Bucks. They're the guys that got him in. In storyline, it was Cody who gave Darby his big break. So a uh, Russo deal would be, you know, regardless of what you see on television, we're going to tell you what really happened behind the scenes. That's a Rus That's not what this was here. But getting the crowd to chant for the guy headlining WrestleMania against Roman Reigns, that was really something else. And, uh, yeah, I mean, these blokes, you realize the Young Bucks came out in bloody suits? They were covered in the blood of Darby and Sting. They beat up the children, the children of Sting, who granted are grown-ass men. Much bigger than them, in fact. Much, much bigger than, <laughs> than Darby. But still, they're civilians. You don't want to do that. No. Sting's not even here. Like, why is he not here? Was he beaten so badly? Is he tending to his sons? Well, the follow-up was merely just talking. So, yeah, the follow-up was, uh, I don't know if I go as far as say pitiful, that seems strong. But um, this was a poor follow-up to the the beating from last week. Yeah. And uh, and that was pretty much universal within the company, that uh, this was a big miss. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.